Hi and welcome back to Podcast School. This is another A2 Technology and Design video podcast. Today we're going to take a look at the Carnot map again, but this time three variables. So in the last podcast we, we took a look at the Carnot map, but it was for with two variables. So today, as I said, we're going to continue that theme and we're going to include a third variable. So this is just a little bit of revision from before. Before we had an event A, where the probability of A happening was given by uh, an enclosed circle. Therefore, the only other thing that could happen was not A, an A bar. That's A bar. So the entire probability covering every possibility is governed by or enclosed by the black rectangle. And we saw that if we drew, redrew it, it looked like this, just A and A bar beside each other. And we did the same for B and B bar. Now we're going to do the same for C and C bar. Therefore we can draw this incredibly complicated Venn diagram that shows A, B and C and of course A bar down here, B bar and C bar and if you look at all the areas with where these tri uh, sorry, triangles, <laughs> where these circles overlap, you can see that they enclosed all the various possibilities that could uh, actually happen. Okay, so if we took a look, B and C there overlap there, so that's B and C. In this little part, it's B and C and A, or A, B and C, and so on and so forth. But we're not even going to deal with that. That, that That's too complicated. What we can do, though, <clears throat> excuse me, is to overlap in the uh, rectangles the same way we did before. Notice this time we keep C bar uh, split. So we've got two C bars. We've got C bar up here, and we've got C here, and C bar again. And you'll see the reason for that in a moment. Bringing those outside, you've got A bar and A. And down the side we've got B bar, C bar, B bar, C, B, C, and B, C bar. Now, some of you will notice something already about the pattern of this. Yeah, it's very similar to the truth table. Remember, a bar, uh, although it's the complement, we think of it as being a zero in this case. So that would be a zero to one. And down the side here we've got, look, zero, 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 one, because that's not a bar, one, one, one zero very similar to the truth tables that we've been drawing up up until now again we can draw the the table out and rearrange it into a Carnot map form and this is just what I uh, explained earlier now there's no reason whatsoever why you couldn't have had a B up here and a C by itself and had the the Carnot map uh, four cells a wide and too tall. There's no reason why you couldn't do that. I've just said there that the three variable Carnot map has two to the three or eight cells, the small squares within the map. Each individual cell is uniquely identified by three Boolean variables A, B and C. Okay, so I've asked a question here. Which cell is uniquely identified by A, B and C bar. Well, we know that it must be A and B must be a 1, because remember we're saying here that a bar is representing a 0. So A first of all has to be a 1. So the only place that A is a 1 is in the right hand column, so our cell must be somewhere in this column. We know that B must be a 1, but if we look across in the top two uh, rows, B is a 0. So it can't be this one or this one. So that leaves us with the lower right-hand side cells to choose from. But we're also told that it must be C bar, or C being a zero. And the only place that that happens is in this lower, very most low right one. Okay, so that in fact is the cell uniquely identified by A, B, C bar. Do you get it? Here's another one. 
which cell is uniquely identified this time by A, B bar, and C. Okay, A must be A1 again, so it must be again in the right hand column. B bar this time, so it must be B must be a zero, so it must be in one of the top two uh, cells on the right hand column because B is a zero in those cells. And of course, we are told that Z, Z, <laughs> what's wrong with me tonight? A C, sorry, must be a one. So it must be a 1 in here. So the only place that that happens is in this cell. Okay, so it's uniquely identified by there, by that one. Okay, that should be straightforward enough. Now that we can represent a Carnot map uh, with three variables and uniquely identify the cells, we can begin to do something really useful. And we'll see that in the coming podcasts. Okay, that's your lot for now. Until next time, bye-bye.